I'll tell you what I'm doing. That way they help. <laughs> okay, the Spring Hill Professionals. You may not know it, but at one time we had a tailor here. His name was Bernard Stevenson. He also had a shoe shine shop, and in the back of it he had pool hall. That's where you can find Richard Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> William McKenzie, he was the first plumber here and um, electrician. I'm sorry, I just can't say it. He was the first electrician. And we also had a, the first African American woman was Roberta McKenzie. And she is now a native of, she was a native of here, and she still lives here. Our first African-American nurse was Mary Virginia McKissick. First she went for an LPN, then later she went for an RN. And she worked at Murray County Regional Hospital for 30 years. Richard Jenkins, my uncle, was the first African-American policeman. After him, the first woman was Felicia Brown. My husband, Charles C. Buford, where you stand up, baby? Let me show him how cute you are. <laughs> you know, I think you're pretty good prop, didn't I? <laughs> then my, the first business here, barbershop, was by my pastor, Lazarus Davis. The first alderman for Spring Hill African America was Shirley Jean Sanders, and later my first cousin, uh, Deborah Jenkins. But I wanted to read a little something about my uncle, the policeman. They call him Barney Fight and Richard. <laughs> so I don't know which one was Barney, do you? <laughs> but this, this is a shout bio of my uncle. Richard Monroe Jenkins was born and raised in Spring Hill, and he was born to the parents of Wiley and Rosetta Jenkins. He married Will Jean Jenkins, Will Jean McKenzie, and was a father to Gwendolyn, Jacqueline, Richard Jr., and Tanya. Richard's big, biggest accomplishment was becoming a policeman after serving as a volunteer constable. He became the first policeman in Spring Hill and worked with Paul Williams, that's what you see in the picture there, and gave him much joy when his health started to fail. Richard continued to ride along with Paul on days and night shifts. This kept his mind off his terminal illness. Richard passed away June 21st, 1986. Many people shared his personal police story. He never met a stranger. And everybody loved Richard. And everybody loves Richard. <laughs> he would make you laugh like it's crazy. The other part of the professional part, I'm, I'm jumping back and forth saying I'm sorry. Well, I was a personal shopper for uh, Castronautics, for those of you that knew the store. Mm -hmm. They were a part of May Company. I was the first African American that started working as a personal shopper there. When General Electric came to Columbia in 1971, I was the, I was the first hired for Spring Hill there. <laughs> <laughs> I was fifth on seniority, and I stayed there 20 years. The next first from no, we're on the oh okay that's the whole group of personal shopper and uh i think i'm the one now on that end <laughs> just teasing i'm the third one over there <laughs> i seem to pay attention now aren't you? but and the next person on, on my agenda is Bill Hall. For those of you that knew Bill Hall, he was on Channel 4. He began working for Channel 4 in, um, as a matter of fact, February of 1974. 
He was also the snowbird for the kids, so they, you know, they were always excited to hear when the snowbird was coming. So he stayed there uh, for 30 years, like I said, and he was also a Vietnam vet. The next person is uh, my daughter, Kawanda. You know, it's a poor frog, don't no praise his own harm, right? <laughs> and you see, it, there is no, no I in team. So this is a team here that we work with. So Kawanda Braxton was, she was the first one to receive the DAR, DAR award back in the early days. She was the first to receive the President's Scholarship Award from Columbia State and she was the first student council president at Columbia State. And she went on to get a degree in teaching and she taught until 2018 and that's when we lost her, my husband and I. So needless to say, it was a, a loss, but it was helping get. Military? Where did Bill Paul live? He lived in Nashville. No, I mean here. When he lived here, uh -huh. he lived in Newtown. Did he? Okay. Uh -huh. His mother lived after then. Noonie Brooks and her got together and they lived out on Sugar Ridge here, Road, I believe. And I missed one of my first. I'm, you don't have to go back then. I'm just going to talk about it. Uh, McDonald Olden. He was our football player with the NFL. We'll come back in, okay? Yeah. Well, the other first in Spring at Spring Hill School was Felicia Felicia Oden. She was the first cheerleader, African American cheerleader in, in Spring Hill, and she was the first African American to also receive her realtor license. So, and she was on the commission in Columbia for. We will if you want to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just bouncing around now. Oh, you're killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I done sat up all night, had to call it. Here we go in, in circles, but we got to school. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I'm just as unorganized here as I am at home. Is that tell you anything? <laughs> okay. So we're gonna talk a little about, bit about the school. We attended a two-room school. It was down on McElmore Avenue. It had two rooms on one side, which was the east side. It was the grades one through four. On the west, on the east side, I mean, was five through eight. West side was one to four. And it was always funny when we attended school, we looked more to the recess and, and lunch than anything. But we had some of the greatest teachers. They always wanted us to have good manuscript, penmanship, and all of that. But we looked forward to the field trips and things that we would take. But to tell you what was on the inside of the school, the, the two rooms, and in the center was a kitchen. But after so long, for some reason or another, the cap, the food, the cafeteria was cut out. So we ended up having to take the older, older pe girls, a boy, in the eighth grade or the seventh grade, and guess what? <coughs> we had to make a list and go uptown. Where well, was uptown? Anybody know where uptown is? Of town was the main street, street of Spring Hill. So the older girls, a boy, would make a list of the younger ones. And by that, they would make a list and make whatever, bring back whatever the students wanted. So we brought their lunch back. And back in those days, you could buy a piece of bologna and two crackers. <laughs> or you could buy a stack of those kissies that was penny for the pack, banana brick, banana, banana flavor, the chocolate, whichever. And every morning, we would stand out front and pledge allegiance to the flag. 
And on top of that, we wouldn't have a play at the end of the school year. Under the east side was the high end of the school. Under there, it would be four flat forms that they would put together for us to get on stage at the end of the year and put on a play. We did the fraction of the play during our recess time. After that, we would go and um, play outside and play ball. And we didn't have inside facilities, but we had one over here and one over there. <laughs> one for you and one for here. So that's the way we worked back then. And it was always so much fun at the end of the year also was to take trips. We would end up going to Hadley Park or we would go to see the sites like the Capitol and Hermitage and all of that. In the meantime, one of the trips that we were on, it was so funny, one of the boys on the bus, when we got there, those of you that remember, the Life and Calendar building used to be the tallest building in Nashville. So when we got there, here we go, we're riding around, and he looks up and he says, hey everybody, look, that's the entire state building. <laughs> Needless to say, he never was able to live that down. <laughs> and along the lines of, of um, the education that we received, we have one other person that I have to give a shout out to, and that's Martha Lockridge. She is the, one of the hardworking women that I've ever known, and she is my cousin. She was the first to graduate from Columbia State, <coughs> along with Evelyn Lloyd, who lives here. Mom ended up with about three degrees and me. <laughs> 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 but just to tell you a little bit about her, Mom completed her second secondary education in 1965 from College Mill. Columbia State College afforded me the opportunity, her the opportunity for a higher education. <clears throat> Eva Morton was her best friend and she was along with her when this happened. For 10, 27 years, she was employed by Union Carbide, lo okay, located in Columbia. <clears throat> in 2001, due to the loss of her of pro pro production, her, posi her position in sales was eliminated. And after 27 years again, she enrolled in Columbia State and, and obtained her third degree, like I said, from there to become a registered nurse at the age of 56. And she had happened to be oh, your hand up, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry I messed up your file a little bit. So now we talk a little bit about inventors. Uh, oh, well, she was, this is some of the children. Joyce, she, she, she was a native of uh, Spring Hill. These are some of the children that graduated. Mm -hmm. Trina was, she got her PhD and she planned to be here tonight, but she's got gout. So she called me a few minutes ago. So she was, so that is her on the <laughs> second row with the braids coming down. <laughs> And we also have another picture of, I don't know whether we got it. There it is, that's her now. And she had retired. And that was that was Felicia that I mentioned to you earlier. She was the first uh, cheerleader for Spring Hill High. <coughs> that's some of the boys. Now, the boy on the end is Trevor's brother. His name is Tony Reynolds. And Richard will have to help me with the rest of the names on, on the other. It's underneath it. <laughs> but, and that happened to be McDonald Oden, the one that I was telling you about earlier. He played with the uh, uh, Cleveland Brown, a brown Cleveland with their wig on. <laughs> <laughs> know how much I know about football, huh? <laughs> but anyway, we, we have so many people that have been achievers here in Spring Hill that it's so many, and I know I have probably the probably missed some, 
but charge it to my head and not to my heart. Oh, <laughs> Zachary Holm, he was the first valedictorian from the Spring Hill High School. And that was, I believe it's 1969. Well, you can go wherever you want to go and I'll catch up with you. <laughs> Military? Okay. We have Lavender Carwell, Ben Carwell, Plummer Hattel, James Carwell, James Wacky Carwell, that was a nickname. <laughs> St. Clair Lockers, they call him Sarge, J.C. Stevenson, my father, Wally Deacon Jr., Master Sergeant Robert Lee, they call him Wood, and of course, Bill Hall, as I mentioned previously, <coughs> he was with uh, the, uh, the with, in Vietnam. That's my father. Don't put too much Benny's in here. <laughs> you know, Benny will put, it, put everybody on hold. <laughs> I want everybody to know Benny. He is the sweetest young man that I know. He's got a mind that I think it, it keeps running 24-7. And whatever we senior citizens say, he, he compiles it in his head and tells us about it the next, time, next meeting time. <laughs> Uh, the other person I want to mention while we're at military, that uh, when they started to uh, go under the draft law, William Oden uh, was the first one from Spring Hill. Ed William Oden, he was the first Amer um, African American to be under the draft. Well, this was my home for several years that I'm going to talk to you about. This church is located on Macklemore Avenue, and it's West of Jefferson United Methodist Church. And this is the history of it. West of Chapel AME Church was started in 1881 when, when land out and it landed on what was known as Rally Hill Pike. That's what Macklemore Avenue used to be called. It was purchased from A.J. Williams and his wife, Caledonia. Isn't that a name? Mm -hmm. Of Murray County. <laughs> the deed is dated July 13, 1882, and was registered August the 8th, 1882, at which time the first frame church was erected. In later years, the name of the church was changed to Wesley Chapel Methodist Church on January 10, 1963. A tornado, the original frame building, and the next three years was spent raising money to erect a new building, which we now use, which they now use. I'm saying we, but I feel like I'm still a part of them. A second track of land was purchased from Mr. and Ms. Mitchell, Miss Alicia's grandparents, in 1964, November 13, 1964. In 1968, the name was changed to Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church. The faithful and the love of God that the members of this church have shown throughout the years is evident in Wesley Chapel continued presence and service to the community and to the world. The past at the Wesley Chapel now is Deborah, Reverend Deborah S. Owen. She is an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church She's a graduate of Middle Tennessee State University and re received her Master of Divinity degree from the Benedict Divinity School. A native Nashvilleian, Reverend Owen has been a pastor of Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church since 2005. 
And I also wanted to tell you that uh, Holy Week, they have always had a program called Journey to the Cross. If you haven't attended that, it is something to see from a small congregation. I went with them several years back. We went to the Methodist Church, United Methodist Church in Brentwood, right? And um, so they came back and they did the same, same thing with four or five members. It is unbelievable how they put everything together. And thanks to one of them is Marvel Lockridge back there. And it goes from the upper room to the empty tomb and it has 10 stations. So this year, if you get a chance, make sure you go by and check that out. The next church, it's my church home. I don't know what, my preacher here. I want him to claim me. <laughs> <laughs> I am a member of the Newtown Church of Christ. And it's, as a matter of fact, my grandfather was one of the original ones that helped to start that church when they had the tent. I'm sure some of you heard about it. But I'll tell you a little bit about that. In 1952, Brother Alvin Simmons and Brother Marshall Keeble went up to the White Brothers for support and secured the tent so that the gospel could be heard preached in the black community of Spring Hill. The tent was set up behind the colored school and meeting lasted two weeks. Brother Simmons preached the first gospel meeting on May the 26th, 1952. It was very successful. 23 souls were baptized into Christ, thus a new town church of Christ was born. Brother Lee Harvey from Nashville and Brother Ronald Bahammer of Temple Hill gave freely of their time working and getting the congregation established. After meeting for several months in the Negro Colored School, the house of the Lord blessed them the purchase of a vacant house on the lot on Duplex Road formerly owned by Bill Hall's mother, Emma Jane Hall. Under the leadership, Brother Hardy and Brother Hammer, a very dedicated brothers, was discouraged, discovered, I'm sorry, among the members. Brother Gable Prowl was quickly assumed the responsibility of holding the congregation together and getting the needed assistance from the neighboring congregation. Through the cooperation and the zeal of a small group, a very nice white block building was completed in 1954. In 1963, that structure was totally destroyed by a tornado. Very quickly, a new building was erected with the help of many skilled brothers from Nashville and neighboring congregation. During the 50s and 60s and 70s, many student preachers from Nashville Christian East Institute under the leadership of Brother Keeble preached their first sermon at Newtown. In the midst, mid to late 80s, several preachers from Christian College in Florence, Alabama, have preached here also. To this day, Newtown continues to operate as the doors and give ways to preachers near and far, the opportunity to introduce themselves to the brotherhood. Indeed, Newtown is an evangelist dream. Many have either started their work here or were allowed to get more experience through this congregation. Newtown is very thankful to the Lord and every, every pioneer in the gospel for its rich history throughout the grace of God and his blessing. The Church of Christ at Newtown will continue to be a bright, shining light in the community. We've had several preachers from the 50s to 1989 when Brother Carter took over and to his death at 2615. At the present, we have Brother Lazarus Davis. <clears throat> St. Mark United Baptist Church. This is the building you see on Murray Hill that is in need of some love. <laughs> Much needed love. So I have to give Alicia Pitt credit for trying to work with everyone to get this a reality instead of a dream. <clears throat> so hopefully if you see anything going on with that, that you'll help in her endeavors. St. Mark is a historic Primitive Baptist Church on Murray Hill. 
It was built in 1900 and added to the National Register on Historic Places in 20, two, 2000. For some hundred years, this building has stood in Spring Hill, also a place of worship and also a place of learning. St. Mark has been named as the historic rule, rural African-American church in Tennessee and listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The congregation dates back to 1866. The building has been around since the late 1900s and probably the oldest African-American church in the country. It was originally named the Spring Hill Primitive Baptist Church and was a, pet, was a part of the Big Harvard United uh, Primitive Baptist Church. At the present time, no services are held at this location. Can you go back to the picture where it shows that church? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, to mention something about the Baptist Church is uh, we were talking about it in one of our meetings, and Richard brought up how you used to see the people in white, how they would you would see them walking from Murray Hill down to Macklemore, and they would walk to what we used to call Buck Wiley's Field, but the Salit, Pat Salit bought it. And um, on Saturday, uh, the school. No. Uh, I'm sorry. I was talking about them having the meetings for them to be baptized at, at the church here in the corner when it was up and flourishing. On Saturdays, they would have the meetings and everybody would be in white and you would see them walking and they would just be singing and praising the Lord. You would think, oh my goodness, they're having church on the street. <laughs> so they would walk from the Murray Hill down Macklemore to the creek. And that's where they baptized. They would come back and on Sundays they did the foot washing, as it is in the Bible, and how they gird themselves, and they turned the seats, and they had the number three tub with full of water, had the wash pan. Now, those of you that, you know what a wash pan is? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> they had a wash pan, and each one of the ladies, they would be down like this, trying to get out from under those stockings. <laughs> And they'd be tucking them behind them, the shoe behind them. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, you see them jumping all over the church with the Holy Spirit. And we as children, we go, what's wrong with them? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> so then we know that as you get older, you know what was happening to it, if you got any feeling at all about the Lord. But anyway, they would, they would come back, and then they would, what they would call, feed them on the ground. They wouldn't actually beat them on the ground, but that's what they said anyway. So that was, those were back at the good old days. <laughs> I remember we grew up on Depot Street, right, like right behind Jimmy's Cleaners, and we used to sit in the yard on Sunday afternoon and listen to them sing. That's true. And the ladies and wives would walk by our house uh -huh. to get to church. They would. They would. <laughs> and you know what? I never will forget one Easter. Those of you that remember Queen Anne Hill, anybody here remember what a Queen Anne Hill is? See, y'all as old as I am. Y'all know this little old hill the first page you get. <laughs> anyway, my mother bought me some for Christmas, for Easter. And we walked, Willie Jean, Richard's wife, and myself, that was our first pair of heels. We walked the heels off of those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> So, needless to say, we didn't have any heels. <laughs> For those of you who are not familiar with the Macklemore reference to the creek, walking Macklemore to the creek, if mm -hmm. you drive Miles Johnson now, there's a little creek on the right hand right. side as you go towards Old Kedron and Kedron. That's the creek they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So they would walk from Murray Hill all the way, all the way over there to do to do baptism. And we didn't think there was nothing, but I can't walk across the road now. <laughs> <laughs> you and the rest of them. <laughs> but they didn't think anything about it. And I never will forget this, too. The neighbors down from us, I used to live on, on Duplex. And uh, 
when they widened the road, that's when we had to move over here up the depot. And there was some oranges. And I don't mean to offend anybody when I say this, but it sounded like it was a bunch of Jews or something. <laughs> been to them and how they're just so glad to be here and I think we have some pictures of us but we might have had those for the book we had Miss Liza Owens and she was holding Alicia Fitz somewhere in her arm <coughs> your mother speeches, whatever you want to call You have to memorize it, get before people and say your little Easter speech, as we would call it. Then we'd have this big Easter egg hunt. And that's what they're doing. And back at the school, they're having an Easter egg hunt. That's good. Mm -hmm. There's Beulah and Alicia. Really? That's the picture you had to choose? <laughs> I guess until her death, right? Yeah. Can I tell a Beulah story? Yeah, you can tell a Beulah story. I don't remember a time growing up when Beulah wasn't a part of my grandparents' life, and she was probably my grandmother's closest friend mm -hmm. in many, many ways. But when she retired, my mom had to work with her to get, get her on Social Security, so we were never quite sure of her age. When my grandfather turned 90-something, we had a party up at the house, and Beulah was invited but she would not sit in the living room with my grandfather. She insisted on sitting in the kitchen. And I didn't figure it out until I went to the kitchen and realized that every single person that came to that party went to visit Beulah and would slip her a $5 bill. Oh. <laughs> she was making money on my grandfather's birthday party. <laughs> I, I wanted to tell you a little something too about growing up on Saturday nights in the black neighborhood. We would listen to the Grand Ole Opry, believe it or not, <laughs> and during that time, uh, it was Eddie Stubbs, and, we, and he would play the album, and we would sit there and we'd just be padding our feet, and we'd have bologna, <laughs> little cheese, crackers, pickles. That was the only time we got it. We were poor. We didn't have all the fancy food that you can go in every day to get. Mm -hmm. And during Christmas time, we only had oranges and apples and raisins and that kind of stuff. I didn't have it in a box because I was the only child, so I was fortunate enough to have too much. But there were some, but I still didn't get it until Christmas. Mm -hmm. And that's the only time we saw fruit, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Those of you didn't know? Mm -hmm. It wasn't as readily available like it is today. And I want to tell you another little story about, I was a part of Head Start as well before I started with General Electric in the 60s. I worked at CPS for a while. That string and tie and stuff, it wasn't for me. You had to go like this and you had to sell on the strip. I said, nope, it ain't me. So 
I worked about three seasons there. Later, I started working. Peggy McKenzie was working for the Office of Economic Opportunities, and they called it OEO. So she was a person from here. And I took her place, and they called us field service aides. And what our responsibility was to go around Spring Hill and to find people that was in need of different services that like the Veterans Affairs, Rehabilitation, Mildred Walker, I think, was over there at the time. Please excuse me, I get short of breath. But during that time, we would go from house to house. One, three, uh, four. Uh, Carolyn Harold, Bessie May Ring, Lady Sellers, Grace Overton Ferguson. We were the first one to work with the Office of Economic Opportunity here. Lady Sellers and Grace Ferguson, they taught at the old College Hill School for 30 years until Lady passed. And I talked to Gracie the other day to find out that. But Carolyn and I worked together. So we went up to theater one time. There was a guy out there, Henry Thompson. He used to bring uh, vegetables down from the hill. So we were riding around. I said, Carol, let's go up to Henry's. I said, we're going we gonna to get us some vegetables. <laughs> so we were riding. We pulled in his yard. And he called me Jack. He said, Jack, what are you doing here? I said, we want some vegetables. Not today, Jack. <laughs> I said, I want some beans, I want some corn, I want some tomato. He said, not today, Jack. He pulled out old pistol and went, fire! Carol Joe said, we don't need no vegetables. I said, all right, we don't need, we don't need no vegetables. <laughs> he didn't say we come home, we didn't have no vegetables. <laughs> then the other time we went out to Keeper Road and there was this house. <laughs> And I don't know the breed of this dog, but some of you might know. You know, they saw a rust colored in the front and they dog black, and they usually are quite vicious. They will bite you. <laughs> so we got out of the car and we said, we don't hear no barking. Nobody was coming to the door or anything. Mm -hmm. So we eased out. We were walking to the door and I said, Carol. There comes the dog, go over. I said, Carol, that's a nice dog. He's a dog. We don't mean you no harm, dog. We just want to come in. Come in. When we got, finally someone came to the door and they said, How did you two women get in here? <laughs> he said, That dog has been three people and y'all got by. I said, Yes, sir. I said, But let me tell you. My legs are not gonna be able to see the leg out of here. <laughs> no, but anyway, no words for that. So now we talk about maids, maybe? <laughs> Frank Hill is noted for having good cooks and, and people that helped out in different areas. We've already mentioned Beulah Larkridge that worked for the Mitchell. Lucius and Ellis McKinsey. They worked on the Haynes Farm. And they had an article out several years ago talking about when Haynes caught on fire. Um, oh, that's my mom. That's Sarah Lockridge. She used to work for Haynes Haven. And uh, that Lancaster was only back then. And uh, the, I think it was the Shepherds that was at the horse barn took care of that. But the Lancaster had a daughter named Beth. And they always had a little swimming pool. And my mother said, now don't you go down there. You come down here and get in that, that little pool. I'm not gonna, you don't have any, but one set of clothes. I won't. You know, look at me. <laughs> Y'all know I didn't behave, right? <laughs> so the first thing I did when we got down there, you went in the basement, if you've ever been in Haynes Farm, Haynes Farm, in the basement. This, the rocks are bevel in the basement. 
So, they had all these heads, and I'm a country girl, black girl. Ain't seen no heads cut off and hanging on the wall. And that's what they had all around me. I busted my head. She said, didn't I tell you not to go around me? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Next thing I did, I got in that one. So needless to say, I'm a rebel. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> she also worked for Watson Cafe as a cook. And she trained me the same way. I thought, well, me being the only child, she ain't gonna make me work. <laughs> but she did. <laughs> and those of you who remember Holland Cab, Mr. Holland would come and pick me up. I started working when I was 14 or 15, washing dishes there for 50 cents an hour. So one morning, he came to pick me up. And he said, hey there. I said, how you doing, Mr. Glenn Watson? He said, hell, you still asleep? <laughs> His name was Glenn Holland, not Glenn Watson. Watson was who I was working for. <laughs> 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 but anyway, so the next, next place that she worked was Stan. She worked a little while with Stan, so we could move on from there. And, um, this is Stan's pizza. Now I know everybody on there except that Bill Rose. Sal Brown is the second person. Daniel, Stan, his wife Myrtle, Terry Park, Robin Hooden, Shelton. Back row, Viola Dawson, they call her Sweet Mama. The next one is Bill Hall's mother, <coughs> Blanche Chairs, Eddie Pearl Blair, my Aunt Tight. And Hattie McKinney, they call her Miss T. She was responsible for taking care of Myrtle's home and the cabin things out back. Joe Blow was a dishwasher. My aunt Rose a Aikens, Jenkins, and Bobby. And the guy on the end that's been over like he's I want to be there. <laughs> that's Charles Blocker, that's Bill's all brother. Where was Stan's restaurant? Hmm? Stan's restaurant was in the empty lot next to the, I call it the wishy-washy, but the yeah. laundromat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the barber, it was in that empty lot. You could still see the faces. Mm -hmm. Stan's restaurant became a uh, poplar house. Mm -hmm. uh, Country Haven. Country Haven. Mm -hmm. Stan, remember that 31 was the only road north and south. There was no interstate until the 70s. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Stan, Phil, decided that he would start a restaurant at that location on 31, and then he realized if he fed the truckers, he could let them have a place to sleep in the back, so he built some cabins in the back, and that was the place to go. There are some that have said that the place to go at Stan's was actually the back of Stan's, because mm -hmm. that's where the African-American women were cooking, mm -hmm. and that was the better food. Yes. <laughs> and also, uh, at Watson and uh, South Wind, Martha's mother worked, Georgia Locker, she worked there as well. Was it his mother was Martha? Watson. South Wind and Watson was where your mother worked? Mm -hmm. Watson's was at the corner of Macklemore and Main Street. Yeah. And Southman was down where um, oh, right. Subway. Subway. Yeah. Subway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Fannie Lou, Fannie Lou Allison, she worked for the Shorts, mm -hmm. Margaret Short and her father. Margaret Short, I believe, she worked for the Social Security office for a long period of time. Is that right, Richard? Are you, oh Lord! I, 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 get my back up! I can't stand that. <laughs> All right, then who was it? <laughs> and Eliza, Miss Eliza Law Owens, she also worked for the uh, Alice Polk. They lived out where Magnum and all them are. The, the house there on the right that was the Polk Polk home. So, Trustee? Huh? Yes. We had um, Alec Drive, uh, it was named after Alec Jenkins. That's the, when you go out uh, Duplex Road and it's a section that makes some mm -hmm. half of a square. Mm -hmm. uh, and that used to be a dirt road all through there. 
at one time. And that's where all the happenings were when we were growing up. <laughs> My mother would say, you can't go to Newtown, that's what it's called. Why can't I go to Newtown? Well, I'm not ratting anybody out, but you could get you a little nip, or you could shoot a little, <laughs> or do a little bit of whatever, but it was fun. <laughs> I don't know what y'all talking about. I love going over there and looking at it, whether I could be involved or not. And they had uh, over there too, where Gabriel Crown property in a part of the creek, it was what they called the blue hole. And they said, don't go swimming in there. What do we do? We're swimming in there, yes ma'am. And the other thing, uh, as you go down Duplex Road before you go over the bridge, the street there is called Hughes Avenue. It's named after educator Anderson Hughes from uh, Columbia, Tennessee. The next place is my ancestors. No, it's my husband. That beautiful lane, it's off of Duplex too. It's the opposite of Lee Lane. It's Solomon Wilson, but they always did a lot of shopping here. Yeah. And then the Tennessee off and on. A lot of people may not realize the Tennessee off and on used to be for children that was misplaced or didn't have family, right? You remember? So each one of the buildings, they I guess you'd call them house mothers or whatever. And uh, my mother worked in the second building, I believe, was Mrs. Welch. And you were responsible for feeding those kids and taking care of that group of kids. I can't remember how many children she was responsible for, but during that time, that's what it was for. And in the, these later years, I think it's for delinquent children instead of people that are displaced from families. And the people that worked there, E.R. Moore, he was over it. And uh, Mackie Haywood, she was the secretary. And Anna Mae Lee, she worked in the cafeteria. And William Thompson, they nicknamed him Clum. And of course, my, like I said, my mother. But I have to tell you about the first car I bought. I bought it from Tennessee Alpernoe. 1954, white and blue, shop, $350. Oh, I thought I had bought a Cadillac. I went over to Fanny Allison's house, and she, they called me sister. She said, sister. I said, come here, I got something. She said, what is it? I said, I got me a car. Sister, you're so green. Why are you so green, sister? I said, but then, look, the headliner had so much dust. You can't <laughs> I said, look, it come with its own dust. <laughs> she said, sister, you are green. I said, but that's not all. She said, what's wrong? What else? I said, look in the trunk. It had a big old bulb in the back with a head on it about this big. I said, look, I got a light in the trunk. She said, like, oh, Lord, so will you please sit down somewhere? I'm sick of you and they come. <laughs> but, Hi, so, yes. Before Ernie Moore was Brother Richter, he I, was there for a lot of years. Who was that? Brother Richter. Monty. Yes, he was. Uh huh. Uh huh. Is sure that, was. Is that the one they call Daddy Boots? Daddy Boots. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Hey, Simon, let me tell you another story about the home. Okay. My wife worked in the baby department with a lady named Clarabel Welch. Uh huh. And they had from babies up to about three years old. That's what my mother worked for Clarabel. Okay. And every day when I got off from work. I would go there in the afternoon and take them all chocolate popsicles. <laughs> I know what a mess they made. <laughs> well, anybody got questions? That that's my presentation. I hope it wasn't too boring and I hope it wasn't too comical. But I wanted everybody to have Church that's on the National Historic Register and is rather bad shape right uh -huh. now. Is there any plan for that for the future? 
Miss Alicia Fitz is trying to work with us with the group on that. So she, if, she, if you can direct her question, your question to her. Yes, we're waiting on a structural engineer's report. We had a couple of contractors look at the building. You may notice if you drive by it recent, recently and had seen it before that it's boarded up. Mm -hmm. That's not because we're gonna tear it down or do anything like that. It's to keep people and critters out. <laughs> um, the building we think is in actually pretty good shape, but until we get the structural report, we won't know what the first phase is in terms of stabilizing the building. Once the building's stabilized, there's a local group who have ties to St. Mark's mm -hmm. who's going to work on some fundraising. Um, and the hope at this stage, we're still developing sort of a master plan, is to be able to continue to have the sanctuary as a sanctuary, potentially add an, a place where your baptisms can take place that are not the creek, <laughs> um, and add perhaps in addition to the structure that it would allow an opportunity for groups to gather and for a sort of a, a, sort of a, a Spring Hill African American Museum. So yes, there's, there's some real uh, excitement about doing that. Um, so if you hear anything about it, it's gonna get torn down, it's leaning, it's gonna fall down, it's not gonna happen. These portraits will be restored and, and placed back. Yeah, all of these portraits are on loan to the library until we can get the structure sorted out. Um, and there's a group that's got some big fundraising ideas. We haven't really put it out to the public yet because we need to figure out what our costs are and what the steps are to do it. What we can't afford to do, frankly, is have 100 volunteers show up to help work on the building without knowing what they need to do, right? So the Historic Commission, I'm on the Historic Commission and we're working on it. Um, Wanda Guy, some of you may know from her business on Main Street, is, is taking that ball and running with it, but we have probably 10 folks from Newtown who have ties. Mm -hmm. and, and to give you the tie, give you the tie, one of the ties, the, the African American Cemetery in Newtown was actually run by St. Mark's. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of a natural flow over. A lot of the folks who were at um, the churches that Sandra mentioned started, their family started at St. Mark's. So we, we wanna also recognize that, that connectivity <coughs> and that history. So that's a long-winded answer, but thank you, Sandra, for that opportunity. And I have the names of all those people that are in that cemetery over there, and also the one on Mount Yeah, I was going to ask about the cemeteries. Do those churches have cemeteries on the cemeteries with a lot of these people on there? We only had two. And one is in back of what we used to call the White Cemetery on Macklemore. It's on the back side, but it was more of a family kind of uh, cemetery. The Stevensons and some of the more some more relatives were back there. But Newtown was a mixture of whoever could pay for it. They could bury their free. There, there's also the Odin Cemetery, which is yes. out 